All right. Now let's suppose the title, which is the only thing you can see, was not actually here. Let's suppose you were not told about the fundamental theorem of line integrals. There was no clue at all. So like you started 30 seconds into the video, something like that. And you read the question. We're going to evaluate a line integral. Please note this is the line integral that calculates work. One of the two common sort of uh, common textbook notations, not necessarily the formula the way I write it, but there you go. And as we go through the given, again, let's suppose we don't know that it's the fundamental theorem. And we're given a vector field, and then we're given a curve in vector form on a time interval from zero to one. And the first thing that happens is our eyes get distracted by this just not very friendly looking number of terms. They're not difficult individually, but there's just a lot of pieces. And you're thinking, to the, does the teacher really want me to evaluate this? So recall that we could even maybe try to plot points on this graph. I won't have too strong an effort here, but if you let t equal zero, 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 one, so the, the, that would be zero, uh, one, excuse me, and t is zero here, it would be four over one, which is four, so one comma four, and if t is one, one plus two plus one plus one, that's five, and one plus one is two, four over two is two, what we're looking at, well, what we're not looking at, <laughs> is a curve that takes us from the point one comma four to the point five comma two. And I suspect it looks something like this, but only a little bit because of my observation of this. But the fact of the matter is, we don't really want to have to plot all these points. But yet, your instructor says, I want you to evaluate and calculate the work. Now remember, before there was this thing called the fundamental theorem, we learned that it's possible that it doesn't matter if we use this path or not. There was a concept that was called path independence. And in order for that to happen or take place, we have to ask, is the vector field conservative? So, does the M component, does its Y derivative equal the N component's X derivative? question mark. Well, if y is the variable, the derivative of that will be 2x. And if x is the variable here, then derivative of that would also be 2x. Yes. That's the answer to this question. Okay, let's start putting all the pieces together. If this was a conservative vector field, I could choose to use a different path between those two points. I could even do a linear path if I wanted to, or a vertical path and a horizontal path added together. I have the ability to choose any path to get me from here to here that's smooth with each piece, which was one form of shortcut. But then, almost as soon as we learned the shortcut, we realized there was an upgrade called the Fundamental Theorem of Line Integrals. And it required us to know the potential function that went with this vector field. We need that potential function. So we take the two components, 2xy was the x component, and we integrate with respect to x. And x squared was the y component, so we integrate with respect to y. And we build 
our potential function from those terms. If x is the variable, you end up with x squared times y. And then a constant that could have anything that doesn't have an x in it. Here, if you integrate with respect to y, you end up with the same term, x squared y. But there could be any constant that has a not y in it, so, so x or a, a scalar. That means I only really have the one term in my potential function. So that potential function, f of xy, is x squared y. And then it could have a numerical constant. Now, the fundamental theorem says, if you wish to calculate the work that's done, you just need to evaluate the potential function between the starting and ending points of your graph. So that would look like the following. Here's the potential function. for the vector field. And we just let x be 5 and y be 2. So that would be 5 squared times 2 minus x is 1 and y is 4. And we get 25 times 2 is 50 minus 4 is 46. If we had attempted to evaluate on this original curve, we should get the same value 46. But man, I do not want to have to evaluate the other function. So I'm not. That's the blessing of the fundamental theorem.